call on Government Order of the Day number two. Oh, second reading. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. I move, Mr Speaker, that the Land, Transport, Road, Safety and Other Matters Amendment Bill be now read a second time. I would like to thank members of the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee for their work on this bill. This bill will make important changes to improve New Zealand's road safety by targeting two key groups that are overrepresented in our road toll, young drivers and high-risk drivers. It makes changes to the requirements for young drivers. The bill, as introduced, proposed to raise the minimum driving age for obtaining a driver licence from 15 to 16, a zero blood alcohol concentration for all drivers aged under 20, to allow the restricted licence <coughs> test to be toughened. These are crucially important steps as New Zealand has a 60% worse fatality rate amongst young drivers than Australia does, and these changes will help address that sad reality. Recently released statistics have shown that 72% of alcohol-related crashes resulting in death were caused by high-risk drivers people with a previous drink-drive conviction or first-time offenders with an alcohol reading at least 50% higher than the legal blood alcohol limit. To crack down on these problem drivers, the bill as introduced proposed to permit an alcohol interlock program to be introduced, a zero BAC licence for repeat offenders, doubling the prison sentence from five years to ten years for dangerous driving offences causing death, allowing the renewal of a 28-day licence suspension for up to three consecutive occasions while police investigate charges. As well as improving road safety, this bill will also improve the efficiency of our land transport legislation by removing duplicated legislation and streamlining the rulemaking process. This bill was referred to the Transport Industrial Relations Committee in September of 2010. The committee received 85 submissions, and while there have been no substantive changes of any proposals, a number of changes have been suggested by the committee that will improve the effectiveness of current provisions. I believe the bill is better for these changes. Definitions have been clarified, such as cumulative workday. This will assist police, heavy vehicle drivers and their employers in ensuring compliance with work time and rest time obligations. There has been a change to proposals for the regime for collecting blood specimens from suspected drink drivers. The bill proposed allowing changes to requirements to account for more modern, safer methods such as vacutainers as an alternative to syringes. The bill as introduced would have allowed the blood specimen collecting procedure to be set out by the police minister through a gazette notice. Submitters on the bill were concerned that this would remove the current requirement to provide a blood specimen for independent analysis. The right to an independent analysis of a blood specimen by a private analyst remains unchanged. The committee also re recommended changes to alcohol interlock provisions. These will make it explicit that a person subject to an interlock is also subject to a zero breath alcohol level. Clarify that a driver subject to indefinite disqualification can at the court's discretion be sentenced to an alcohol interlock as an alternative sentence and allow the New Zealand Transport Agency to authorise the removal of interlocks from a vehicle. This will ease administration but not allow the Transport Agency to remove a court order. The police have had difficulty obtaining suitable evidence to enforce current chain of responsibility provisions. The bill has introduced proposed extending the police's powers to obtain a search warrant for these offences. The committee, after considering submissions, has recommended that the process for obtaining a search warrant for these offences be the same as for all other offences. This will assist police and send an important message to all people in the supply chain about their responsibilities. The committee has recommended enhancements to the New Zealand Transport Agency powers to allow it to immediately suspend the licences of taxi and other professional drivers who carry passengers where there is a serious allegation against that driver. Currently, an NZTA licence suspension can only take effect 28 days after it's served. This delay could put passengers at risk and the change will improve passenger safety. The committee has also agreed with government on the need to gather New Zealand-specific evidence on the harm caused by drivers who have a blood alcohol concentration of between 0.05 and 0.08. All drivers who fall within this range who have been involved in a fatal or serious injury crash will have their details forwarded to the Secretary for Transport for analysis. Finally, I would like to ask the House to consider at the appropriate time supplementary order papers that will amend a number of technical points in this bill. These papers will correct a number of minor errors and omissions and reduce the administrative burden on the courts. These papers will also allow for the orderly implementation of various new requirements to be inserted into the Land Transport Act. Again, I thank the Committee for its work on this bill. The bill will improve road safety by improving the safety of young drivers 
and allowing for better management of high-risk drivers. It makes a number of other important changes to facilitate the smooth operation of existing transport law. This is a good bill, Mr Speaker, and I commend it to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. The House uh, now comes to the maiden statement of Jamie Lee Ross. Jamie Lee Ross.